Hi darlings, today is day one of the daily musings, which will be these audio clips offering wisdom to guide you back to the unique feminine energy that you have and awaken the enchanted soul within you. So I'm going to be doing these audios for the next um, 14 days or so, just as we celebrate the official cart opening of my elite program, the Erotic Luxury Temple. And I'm just going to chat about various topics for you to reflect on. And today we're going to chat about people or women specifically who do this, who have this habit of people pleasing and this desperate urge to fix other people and save other people from their misery and doing it at the expense of their well-being. So I want to start off by asking you, do you know why they encourage people to not feed wild animals? It's because doing so actually alters the DNA in the animal when they are too reliant on humans feeding them. So what that leads to is it, you know, it ends up affecting their ability to hunt on their own independently, pretty much weakening them. So why am I asking that? Well, because humans are similar in that way. You know, so I want you to understand that when you continuously step into places that you shouldn't, when you keep trying to fix people that don't need to be fixed or taking on responsibility that is not your responsibility, you actually end up enabling the codependency of other people where those people end up feeling like they can't or don't have to conquer the world on their own. And that leads to a lot of burden on your back and it leads to a lot of resentment in you as well. I feel like a lot of women have this radar for what, for it seems like they have this radar for broken people, you know? You know, specifically men, you know, when they hone in on potential, they want to save this man from his misery, even if it means self-sacrificing their own well-being and their own needs. You know, maybe this kind of woman only feels valuable and like she's needed when she's doing that. But I want you to understand at the core of that is actually an insecurity. You know, it's a feeling of I'm not enough, so I have to overgive and overfunction in order to be useful to other people. So a lot of women try to cover up this people-pleasing um, dynamic, this pattern as being nurturing. You know, they say, oh, I'm just a nurturing person. I'm just a giver. I just love to love people. You know, that's why they want to take care of people so much. But if you look closely at that, they're overgiving, they're overfunctioning, and that's actually not nurturing to anyone at all. <laughs> you know, one, because you're depleting yourself to look good for other people, and two, you're actually using other people to cover up the wounds that you have within yourself, you know, and that's actually kind of objectifying when we use other people to make our insecurities feel better, you know, so this helping, this pleasing, it's actually not coming from a healthy place. It's coming from a place of fear and it's coming from a place of insecurity, you know, and that's not loving towards yourself or towards other people. You know, you're not really helping anyone by being a martyr. If anything, all you're doing is running yourself down because no amount of external validation can really fill that void within you. And, though, and then the people that you're stepping in for too much, the people that you're trying to save and fix, they end up feeling like they don't have to step up on their own. You know, so how is that loving? It's not. So I believe in getting to the root of our patterns rather than quick fix, band-aid, you know, quick fixes. And with my clients that go through this, as we start to peel back the layers, what we actually discover is a little girl. A little girl who's actually unconsciously trying to save her parents through other people. So this is just part of being human. You know, we tend to project our inner wounds onto other people. So let's say you had parents that were unavailable in some way, either mentally, emotionally, or physically. And as a little girl, that's going to register in your mind as they're not available for me. Therefore, I have to work for their attention. I have to work for their approval and their love. You know, so since you didn't get that validation from them and their full presence, you know, it creates that deep void within your soul, compelling you to keep recreating this same experience finding people who are distant that you have to fix in order to, you know, there's a part of you that feels like if you keep recreating this pattern, if you keep going through this, that you'll fill that vacant space within you. 
So that little girl in you is still very much active and driving your life. And it hasn't really clicked for her that her parents' misery was far beyond her control and something that she can't fix. You know, but this part of you, this unconscious part of you is convinced that being a good girl means negotiating her worth and bending her boundaries. You know, she feels responsible for hurt people. She thinks it's her job to save them at the expense of herself. You know, and she's driven by this intense fear. You know, it's not love, it's actually fear that's driving the people pleasing. You know, it's actually you desperately trying to avoid abandonment. And it's actually a low key attempt to control other people because like I said, you know, this is pretty much objectifying other people when you keep communicating to them that they need to be saved or that they need to be fixed. You know, when you do this, when you are the people pleaser, when you are the fixer, when you keep jumping in when you weren't asked for, the message that you send when you do that is that you don't trust other people to figure themselves out. And that leads to a lot of resentment from other people. So I want you to reflect on if you do have this pattern, you know, have you ever experienced trying to give someone something, but then they reject it or they don't want it or they get offended by you offering? You know, you may have good intentions. This doesn't mean that you're a bad woman or anything. But the way that it comes off is that you're saying that you know better than other people, which can be a turnoff to a lot of people. A very a little bit condescending. So to turn this around, it requires healing the mother and father wound. And this is a crucial part of your feminine energy. You know, otherwise, this wound and these patterns continue to fester and it keeps you trapped in this energy of a little girl, preventing you from blossoming as the woman. You know, so it's one thing to intellectualize this information that I'm sharing with you, but it's a completely different experience to actually resolve it from the body. You know, giving you that visceral gut level embodiment to integrate the little girl so that she no longer runs your life in fear. And when you do this, you know, over time, it's going to get you back into your essence and clean, seeing more clearly rather than you being stuck feeling like that little girl who's trapped in that fear-based behavior. So my signature healing process that I go into in my program, the Erotic Luxury Temple, it includes severing the energetic ties to your parents so that you can individuate from them and so that you're no longer enmeshed. This particular exercise that I teach in module two of my program, the Erotic Luxury Temple, it's designed to help you release all of those trapped emotions and really embed the message into your subconscious mind that you do not have to save your parents. You know, this exercise that I teach, it allows you to release that guilt that's compelling you to save other people. And so you can embody that inner knowing that it's safe to grow up, that it's safe to be you. Otherwise, you're going to stay stuck. You know, you're going to stay stuck, trapped, trying to save other people. You remain stuck in that cycle of wounded, you know, of wounded behavior where people rely on you too much to fix them. You know, it's going to have you staying stuck in this pattern is going to have you resentful because you don't feel worthy to have your needs met. And you think that your only value is to be like the self-sacrificing mule. You know, so this kind of pattern, this pattern of overgiving and pleasing and trying to save people, it's not going to lead to fulfillment and it's not going to lead to happiness. It's just going to keep you feeling empty because even if you do try to save other people and fix other people, nothing external can really fill that void on the inside. So it really is an inside job that you have to do from within. And once you begin to dissolve that inner tension, you begin to illuminate your erotic luxury energy and you slowly see yourself blossom as the goddess who has boundaries around the love that she gives. Where, yes, you can have empathy for people, you, maybe you can help people, you can support people, but you also know when to leave people on their own to figure themselves out. You know, so that's the more healthier way to go about this rather than trying to save everyone. It's better for you to have that discernment to know who to help and who to support versus who you need to leave alone. Erotic luxury will help you develop limits to the amount of access people have to your energy. And doing so is what helps you stay vivacious and full of vitality. Otherwise, if you have no boundaries, if you keep giving yourself up very easily, too easily, 
you become very frail, you become very empty, you become very heavy, very dense, very resentful of other people. And that's because if you have this pattern of overgiving and pouring into other people that are like a black hole, pretty much, you know, that's going to leave you feeling empty at the end of the day. So your erotic luxury helps you honor your majestic no. And your majestic no is all about boundaries and you getting clear on what you are and aren't available for, helping you discern the kind of people who need genuine support and who deserve your love versus the people who are just looking to take advantage of kindness. So the kind of woman who struggles with people pleasing, she doesn't have good discernment. She doesn't know who to support and who to set a boundary with. You know, so you do have to take some time to do that inner work so that you can learn how to have better boundaries and learn how to discern people a lot better. So when you get yourself out of that fear-driven mindset, little girl mindset, and embody this new level of reverence with your erotic luxury, that's actually the key to you unlocking a whole new world of possibilities. You know, you have to rewrite your inner narrative that was telling you that all you deserve is being a doormat and start to imprint that new story that states you are worthy of the love that you desire. I mean, you start carrying yourself in a healthier way when you start having discernment around who you put yourself around, when you start having boundaries, healthy boundaries around your time and around your help and around your energy. That calls in a plethora of wonderful abundance. You know, you're going to start attracting this new kind of energy lets you attract supreme energy men who adore you. It's going to ignite impeccable high self-esteem and just the kind of spirit that ignites a high level of respect from everyone around you. You know, so when you respect yourself by having boundaries, by having better discernment, that's when you start ha attracting other people who respect you too. So I want to leave you with this question. If you do struggle with this, what are you secretly hoping to prove when you take on the burden of other people? And really sit with that and be honest with that because, you know, just, just let your soul speak to you. And for those of you that want to take this further, for those of you that struggle with this, maybe you're tired of being the good girl, the people pleaser, the doormat, the nice girl. You're tired of people clinging on to you to fix them. You're tired of people not respecting your boundaries, tired of being resentful, letting yourself be used tired of not being the goddess who receives from men who honor her, then I want, you to, I want to invite you into my program, The Erotic Luxury Temple, where I take this even deeper. I'm going to teach you powerful exercises designed to slice out all of this energetic residue that was keeping you stuck, feeling like a little girl controlled by her parents. And one thing I believe in is not endlessly digging into the same wounds over and over and over again for years. You know, all you need is one powerful exercise to dissolve the energetic side of this pattern along with guidance on how to rewire your behavior and slowly you'll see this pattern evolve. You know, so erotic luxury is about getting you out of that childlike little girl mindset that's looking for approval and it gets you back into your inner woman as you rejuvenate the beauty of your sensual essence, increase your irresistibility, and just become so anchored in yourself that you no longer feel that desire to self-abandon for validation ever again. So today is the official cart opening of my program, The Erotic Luxury Temple, and for only two weeks, I'm offering a special discount along with some juicy, delicious early bird bonuses. So I highly suggest that you join now and secure your spot so you don't miss out on that. And if you're listening to this on Facebook, then I will leave the link to the program down below in the comments. And if you're listening to this on Instagram, I'm going to leave the link to the program in my bio on my profile. All right, ladies, thank you for listening. Thank you for showing up. I love you all. And I will see you over in the temple. All right, take care.